Ahoy there! Welcome aboard another episode of Rule the Waves 2 as Great Britain. The year is 1926 and our war with America is still going on. I have no idea how it has lasted this long, but America has a pretty big fleet, so I guess they just wouldn't give up until we finally put them under. But at this point, uh, it's pretty much over. America has five battleships and one battlecruiser left, and a fair number of those are interned. Yeah, we got one, two, three interned. Or sorry, one battleship interned, one battlecruiser interned. And the remainder are very sorry-looking older ships that have no place in the line of battle. Uh, we do also have a fair number of other ships that have been interned that were sent out as raiders. So America does have a fairly significant cruiser force, which I don't like there. But uh, we've got them blockaded, and we keep on intercepting their raiders and thwarting their attacks. So overall, doing fairly well. All right. They do have a lot of submarines under construction. Oh, my God. So hopefully we can finish this war before those things come out. Otherwise, things may not go too well for us. All right, well, that's uh, pretty much where we're at. We've got a large number of these fantastic new Pandora-class cruisers coming out. Let's see how many we actually have. We've got nine there, plus two more currently working up for a total of 11 ships. Uh, I think I want to make this a nice even number, so we're just going to build one more. So we'll make that... Oh. The Pegasus. Sounds good to me. All right, there we go. Even 12 ships. All right. Uh, we do have a few ships that are currently undergoing repairs, either due to uh, condenser troubles or battle damage. So Collingwood, fair bit of battle damage in the last fight, but overall she's doing pretty good. All right, let's uh, move right along. All right, so we have a small cruiser action off the coast of the U.S. I accept the U.S. declines. We've got an American raider being intercepted. We'll auto-resolve that. They escape, and yeah, the U.S. is on the verge of total collapse. All right. Enemy has sent out feelers through neutral nations about a negotiated peace without border changes or reparations? Absolutely not. That is a terrible plan. We've got them on the verge of collapse. Continued operations will secure our total victory. There we go. Oh, our scientists are well on their way to understanding lightweight fittings. Excellent. Our minesweeper Border Knight has detected and swept an enemy minefield. Good riddance there. And speaking of minefields, the U.S. ship City of Helena has run into one of our minefields. So, good riddance to that, too. Looks like we've thwarted a bunch of attacks. All right. Got that blockade still going on. Germany is doing refits to modernize their ships based on lessons learned. So we'll see where things go from there. Well, we have our two Pandora-class ships have finished working up, so let's send them to the front. Maybe get them involved in the fight. There we go, send them over to the east coast. And we had one more battlecruiser that finished working up, so we'll take her and move her into the fight too. There we go. And off we go. All right. Well, that looks pretty good. We'll move right along to our next turn. All right. Coastal raid, medium sized. I accept. And it looks like we're spawning. We're going to attack enemy ships in general in the hopes that we can take out those transports that always spawn very close. All righty, let's see. We have one battleship. Plenty of destroyer support, one scouting cruiser with plenty of destroyer support, and a seaplane tender. Seems okay to me. Let's check what our recon is. 
Helps if I select a ship. There we go. Recon. There we go. That seems okay. Let's just set the range to something achievable. There we go. Range 80. Not quite as much area as I'd like to cover, but that'll have to do. All right, recon is set. And off we go. We'll just pick up our speed here in the hopes of getting something found and sunk before the end of the day. And we'll turn towards Portland. Let's also accelerate the game speed. All right, scouts are out. Didn't find anything. So we'll just cruise up. Here we go, found something. Accelerate to flank speed. Let's find out what these are. All right, that actually looks like a proper battle force. So we're gonna try and head south and get between them and home. I wonder what we've got here. All right, we've got at least one cruiser, multiple cruisers. Oh, and we've got our new Pandora class out. We'll see how this baby does. Oh boy. Good luck, Sirius. And already scoring hits. And the Rodney is opening fire as well. we'll turn to open the broadsides. All right. Looks like they finally made up their mind to engage. Wow, we're facing one Olympia and one Baltimore. What do we got here? So they're fast, 30 knots. A little bit light on the gun armament there. And how's the other one, the Olympia class? Fast, but also very, very light on the gun armament. All right, I think I'm gonna take control of the Sirius and tell her to go on a flanking maneuver. See if we can get around the outside and cut them off. Okay, they've decided to retreat. And those destroyers are going in. So I'm going to put you back on AI control, so hopefully you do a better job dodging than me. All right, looks like Sirius is doing very well. I'm seeing plenty of good hits out there. And all we really need to do is just sink two ships. I don't particularly care which ones. If I can grab their cruisers, I'd be fine with that. But I'm happy with destroyers too. Oh, and we've got a transport out there as well. Hmm, enemy aircraft approaching Great Britain Destroyer Division 4. Yep, looks like a group of ducks. Not too terribly worried about those. That long range bombardment rarely works out. And I think they missed. I didn't even see the actual attack there. I guess that just goes to show you how ineffective they were. Alrighty, we'll take down that destroyer, we'll grab a transport, and we'll call that a day. We'll call that a very effective offensive patrol. Alright, do we want to pick up survivors? Yes. Yes, to all pick up those survivors. All right, we'll drop back down to cruising speed. There we go, that should finish things off. All 
All right, let's see what else is going on here. It looks like the lark is off on the... Well, it looks like the lark is off on a lark. She's off chasing the enemy fleet. And I'm not a big fan of that. Well, we'll let her keep doing what she's doing for now. We've still got another 600 turns or 600 minutes to burn. So we'll let her do what she's doing for now. But the rest of this fleet is going to disengage. Alrighty, we have sunk our two ships. Objective accomplished. Alright, we'll send out those float planes again, see what we can find. And we'll actually cruise down south for now. Maybe we'll find some more transports or something. Let's pick up the game speed. Nope, foul weather. Do not want to get involved in any fights during that. And there's the knight. I think this is it. Good job, team. We sank a destroyer and a transport. Very effective use of our excessive military resources. And away we go. It was very interesting, actually, to see... Oh, hang on. We got something here. Accelerate to attack speed. And let's run it down. I don't know what that is. But it's not getting away. Aha! A transport. Well then, there we go. Think we put enough six inch shells into it? Go back down to cruising speed. We'll just circle around this for now. Alright, it's sunk. We'll pick up the survivors. Maybe. We'll see. Or not. And we'll head back up. So it was actually very interesting to see in this fight the uh, overall AI response. When they first encountered our cruiser, they moved to engage since they believed they had the force superiority. But the moment they recognized the battleship Rodney and identified it, they turned away and started disengaging and then ordered a destroyer attack. So that was a very overall very sensible response to finding out that you're outnumbered. Protect your uh, major capital ships and use the destroyers to help the retreat. I'm a little bit more puzzled why they turned back to re-engage, though. They might have forgotten that there was a battleship there or something. Who knows? But then they finally made up their mind and completely ran. So that was it. All right, that's the end of the battle. We sank one destroyer and two transports. Overall, pretty good. Let's see how... Oh, here we go. Let's see how our cruiser did. Okay, so we did shoot up the Baltimore a little bit. And where was, here we go, Sirius. Scored 11 hits. Ugh. Pretty poor accuracy overall considering. You burnt through most of your ammunition and only got 11 hits, but hey. It's not too terribly bad for a relatively fresh crew. Fighting at long range. Not bad at all. Alright. And they call that a major victory? We sank one destroyer and two transports. I'm not naming that fight. Alright. Well, at least they've admitted that we're winning now. They're still seeking out a negotiated peace, though. Nope, we're going to crush them. Huh. Nuts. Peace concluded with our side gaining large territories, considerable war operations. We'll see what they consider. All right, here we go. Okay. That actually is considerable war operations. All right. So, specific concerns. Hmm. Well, uh, I definitely want Haiti and Puerto Rico. 
Because we fought hard for the stuff in the Caribbean, and I'm taking it all. I don't really see anything else of significant value, but uh, hey, we've got Midway right here. And that opens up a new military theater for us. So I think we'll grab Midway and we'll start developing that as a little bit of a base there. All right. And that also still gets us a significant amount of war operations. All right, in the aftermath of the war, the naval budget is considerably reduced. And we've unlocked lightweight fittings, so some weight savings, that's always good. And we're close to mastering more weight savings in turrets, so that's good. Oh, here we go. Three and four inch twin dual purpose mounting. Well, that's significant. All right. Well, we're pretty severely in the red right now, so we need to get everyone back home. So we're gonna take all these ships in the Caribbean. We're gonna move those to Northern Europe. We've got a lot of ships over here. So we'll just grab all of these. All of our main fleet, we're gonna move those back to Northern Europe. There we go. Get those in reserve. Or mothballs. I think most of these older, slower ships are gonna go straight into mothballs. All right, other ships we got Two more battleships in the Caribbean. So we'll move those back to Northern Europe. We've got two ships in Southeast Asia. So we're going to move those back to, no oh, come on, there we go. Move those back to Northern Europe. All right, so all ships are properly moving, at least the ones that are able to properly move. All right, and then the Comuses, Foreign Station, Foreign station, foreign station, foreign station. All right, we're gonna have a lot of obsolete ships that need some rebuilding. But, uh, there we go, grab all the Caribbean ships. Move you back to Northern Europe. Grab all these, here we go, grab all these East Coast ships. We'll move you back to the East Coast, or to Northern Europe, there we go. Get all those fellows heading home. All of our foreign stations are looking okay. Those looking good, all those going back to Northern Europe, all right. All of these older destroyers can go, oh, hang on, there we go. All of those can go straight into mothballs. There we go, that was one million right there. We've got a bunch of other destroyers in the Caribbean, the Red Pole class. We'll take those back to Northern Europe. There we go. Bunch of Gurkhas and Lances. We'll move those back to Northern Europe. There we go. And then all of our minesweepers also moving back to Northern Europe. Oh boy, that's a lot of stuff. All right, now while all those are heading back home, we've already mothballed all the stuff available. Uh, we need to look at some refits. Rebuilds and refits. So, one of the fastest ways to save money is to get ships off of stuff. So let's take a look at these Derwents. They were last built in 1918, but we have new technology available for them. So let's take a look if we can do some rebuilds here. All right, nothing significant here. All right, big thing is K-Guns. See if these guys can carry that. All right. And we can carry K guns. Although we are a little bit overweight there, so that's not so great. I do not care about improving the secondary guns. In fact, I might end up removing them completely. Oh, nope. 
There we go. Good enough. So we'll drop that down. Fewer secondary guns, but now we have some K guns. Can I put any more on? Let's see. Nope, got to be 900 tons for ca to carry 4K guns. All right, nuts. But we'll take the two, and that is a significant boost to our ASW capability here. And that is sufficiently significant to be worth the effort. Uh, meanwhile, actually, what about this? So rebuild cost is 45. That'll be three months at 15 apiece. Let's see what happens if I do that. Increased elevation doesn't cost anything. Dual purpose doesn't cost anything, but it does take a little bit of weight. Hmm. Well, it's not like our secondaries have dual purpose options. So if I ditch that, there we go. All right, I think that'll work. We've got two three-inch high-elevation dual-purpose guns. No change in cost. Looks good to me. All right, these are now effective, or more effective. Oh, no, no, can't do that. Okay, never mind. Can't do dual-purpose. So we'll leave those two guns on. All right. Oh, well, there we go. Don't care about using coal, don't care about improving fire control, don't care about improving secondary guns. Good enough. So we are going to rebuild these. There we go. They're going from 4 ASW value to 5 ASW value. Huzzah! It's quite a step up there. Alright, and we're also going to do these Jed class. And we're going to do basically the same thing to those. So we want some K guns on there. And it looks like there is literally nothing else that needs to happen. All right, looks good to me. So we're going to save that. And we're going to unleash some modernized Jed class. And we should also take a look at the Stowers, since those ones are actually are 900 tons. We can put 4K guns on them. All right, one, two. There we go. That's 4K guns there. All right, and we are overweight, so let's drop off those secondaries. All right, so we'll ditch the secondaries. Actually, you know what? No, let's keep the secondaries, and let's drop down the number of torpedoes. There we go. Purely a secondary concern there. And while we're doing this, we've already got the increased elevation on the fours. Alright, so that does change, putting dual purpose does slightly change the cost. But nothing significant, so yeah, I'll just put it on now. And that brings us from, that puts us up to 4k guns on there. I'm not seeing an estimate of our ASW value, which is kind of annoying there. But that should be adding to ASW. So we'll save that. Yep, I don't care. All right, and we are going from ASW value of six. Yep, we'll start the rebuild. There we go. All right, so the Derwents are going up gained plus one, the Jeds gained plus one, and our Stowers are all the way up to eight. So that is plus two ASW value. That's quite nice. That is a significant step up for ASW capabilities. And we're gonna be doing the same thing to the other destroyers. Actually, 
one of the fastest way to get ships home is to put them under rebuild. And my red poles are already reporting obsolescence, so let's see about that. Alright, so my red poles are almost certainly going to be down to ASW only at this point, so I'm not too concerned about that. Let's see, so we've got three inch guns, we've got four inch guns, we've already got the increased elevation. Alright, but we are... We need some K guns, we need some increased depth charge storage, and we need to save some weight here. So we're going to drop off that torpedo mount there. There we go. And we are just a little bit shy there. Let's see, what can we do at this point? Aha! Uh -huh. There we go. Just ditch that last torpedo tube and job's done. Three months, relatively cheap rebuild. And we are significantly boosting their ASW. We've got increased depth charge storage, that's plus one. We've got four K guns, that's plus two. And we're putting a few extra mines on there. So, yeah, that's uh, that's quite the step up there. All right. Yep, I don't care about fire control. I don't care about improving the main guns. These are no longer frontline ships. All right, so we'll go to the rebuild there. And we'll get that rebuild started. Okay, dependencies are looking good. So this will be a little bit expensive for now. But we'll get those ASW rebuilds complete quickly. Let's see, other stuff that has to happen. The Comuses are looking okay, however, the Intrepids are looking rather sad there. Same thing with the Yermiones, so let's see about rebuilding those. I know they're currently set to foreign station. All right, let's see, so six inch guns. Let's see, what else can we do with these? So I do want the increased elevation, since that is basically a free modification there. And I don't really think I'm going to do much else with these. Actually, hang on, we've got the weight. So I could put director firing on. Okay, so that does raise the rebuild cost, as expected. I want to get some mines on here. Because these ships will be all around, and I want them scattering mines all around as well. So let's see what it would take to get those good to go. So first of all, we can start ditching some of those torpedo tubes. There we go, and now we are almost good. So current rebuild cost, 720,000, not bad. Going up to, all right, I don't want to mess around with that at all. So yep, these cruisers will be stuck with casemates. And if we drop 10 off, there we go, that saves us the weight that we need. And these ships are golden. And that gives us the mines, that gives us the improved elevation. I'm not going to mess around with fire control at all. And these ships should be okay. Alright, that seems like a reasonable rebuild for a foreign station ship. Oh, we don't have director. Okay, never mind. So we'll ditch that. We'll leave that at 12 so we don't have to pay for any of that stuff. And if we just drop the mine complement by a little bit, 
There we go. Hmm. Actually, you know what? I am going to leave the number of guns down. We're going to go with 60 mines, and we'll put the remaining weight into anti-aircraft. There we go. Got some of those 20 millimeter guns, so these things aren't completely helpless. They're just almost completely helpless. All right, that seems like a good thing. I'm not going to upgrade fire controller guns because that costs money and these are foreign station ships and we are going to rebuild all of these things all right and we also have the Hermione's that need to be rebuilt too so let's take a quick look at those all right we'll throw on increased elevation because that is dirt cheap yep no changes there Additional armament-wise, I want more mines on those. So we'll put those up to 62. And we can drop off some of these secondaries. There we go. All set. And we have a few tons to put into light AA. There we go. All right. That seems pretty good modernization for these ships. All right, and we're going to rebuild those as well. And I am sure I am going to be very short on foreign station requirements. So I'm sure the king will not be happy with me. Or the prime minister, rather. Let's see, Midway. We can start improving the bases on Midway, so we have some sort of foreign capability overseas capabilities here. Hooray! Figured I should take care of that. Let's see what other stuff we have. So now that we've taken over all of the American bases here, I'm no longer as worried about aviation stuff on here. So let's see. First of all, uh air groups. We can put all of these on a reserve. There we go. Oh, let's see. We got a fair bit of additional bases here. Ponce, Arecibo, San Juan, Puerto de Pai, Puerto Prince, Guantanamo Bay. Yeah, we do not need all of those. All right, so we can take these, and I'm actually going to disband these so I don't have to pay for that. And I think I'm actually going to... Uh, we don't need all of these air bases. That is a fair amount of money that we can save just by deleting all of those air bases. So let's see. Where all do we want air bases? So I'm keeping Kingston because that was a significant air base. I do believe we have an airbase. No, not there. Do we have one here? No, oh, hang on. There we go. Yes, we do have an airbase at New Providence or Nassau. So that is significant. We do want to maintain that. I do expect some stuff around there. So Nassau is a significant base. The Freeport, not so important. I am also not concerned about Port de Pai or any of these other ones. So, yeah, Port au Prince, Port de Pai, yeah, do not need air bases there. Well, actually, hang on, we've got Kingston. We do have an airbase in Guantanamo Bay. But honestly, I think the Port de Pai air base is probably better. So we'll delete the ones in Guantanamo Bay and Port au Prince and we'll get the one in Port de Pai. And then over here, what do we have here? 
Three air bases. Oh my god, we do not need that many. All right, so San Juan, Arecibo, and Ponce. Yeah, nope. Deleting those. All right, so we wanted to keep Port de Pai. We wanted to keep San Juan, but the other ones are going to go. All right, so we go down here. We have where's our air capacity? Those are okay. Scrolling down this way. All right, so Port au Prince. I don't want to expand, I want to scrap. Oh, hang on, here we go. This is where we do it. Okay, so... Port the Pie we keep. Port our Prince we scrap. San Juan, don't care. All right. Way Highway, Harwich, Plymouth. Yep, keeping those. Oh, here we go. That's the ones I was missing. Okay, Guantanamo Bay can go. So we're going to scrap that, and then Ponce, we're going to scrap that, Arecibo scrapped. Okay, and that's keeping one airbase apiece in Puerto Rico and Haiti, so that's good. And that should provide plenty of air cover in the areas that we need it. Uh, they will, however, need air groups. And we can also put these airship bases in reserve. There we go. I've never actually seen an MTB squadron do anything. But I figured I might as well build them. Let's see, anything else here? Well, I don't see any strange caliber things, so I guess it's okay. I know the Americans liked building 8-inch and 7-inch and 9-inch batteries, but I don't see any. So I guess they didn't have any. Trinidad, Jamaica, Trinidad, Jamaica, yep, okay. So, coastal fortifications is looking good. Submarines are looking good. Ships under construction. Whew. Oh my. Okay. That is a lot of ships undergoing immediate rebuilds. Oh, I forgot to put mines on the Stour class. Whoops. Oh well. Don't worry about it. Next refit. Alright. Uh, other ships in need of refits. Alright, we need to figure out what to do with these b older battle cruisers. They were not very effective in our la in the uh, frontline conflicts. So the Invincible has clearly been relegated to backline duties. Let's see if we can do a conversion on this. Just out of curiosity. Alright, so not that big of a ship, but it's fast. And if we clear off all the turrets we clear off all those things and we clear off all of these. How much stuff can we put on if we convert this to a seaplane carrier? Or to a carrier. Alright, so flight deck. And we have almost 7,000 tons available. Let's see how many that works out to. Alright, we could put up to 42 aircraft on here. And if we bulge it, we could go up to 45. Hmm. That's almost a worthwhile conversion. Alright, chip identified as carrier. Yep, change type. Oh, oh no, the design board. Those villains will not authorize such a large ship without at least eight 8-inch eight guns. Okay, well, let's see what it would take to actually do that. So we need some 8-inch guns. Well, at least they're quality one. All right, here we go. Uh, let's put those in casemates. 
Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. And we definitely do not need that level of armor. So let's ditch that. And well, we're a little bit overweight, but not too bad. Let's see, I know we can save some weight by going down to local only. So that's some weight savings. We can ditch the director on our secondaries. And if we go down to 41, well, we'll just go with 40 for now. Nice even batch. It's not a huge step up over our previous class, but honestly, this is not looking bad. Uh, it's only a 13 million rebuild too. And sure, it'll take 12 months and it'll cost 1 million per month, but that is not bad at all. Just out of curiosity, I wonder what would happen. We do want the bulge, that is very important, for the extra displacement and for the extra torpedo defense, because right now this ship has nothing. Just out of curiosity, I wonder what would happen if we replace machinery, because as a battle cruiser, we have a lot of weight wrapped up in our uh, engines. So, rebuild cost 13 million, replace machinery, rebuild cost 30 million, uh, 31 million. Does free up some weight so we can bump up our capacity to 45. Well, that gets us to almost 50 once we remove that. Oh, hang on. Yeah, so that gets us up to a complement of 50 aircraft. Wow. And we don't actually need, now that we're replacing boilers, we don't actually need to insist on 25 knots anymore. We can drop that down. There we go. That's actually looking like a pretty solid design right there. All right, so let's put those casemate guns back on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go, got those casemate guns. And we'll drop off a few of these planes. Alrighty. We do need some sort of heavy AA though, so we're gonna go down to four inch guns, single, dual purpose. And then we'll put a fair amount of the remaining weight from this. Whatever's left over, we're gonna put into a four inch dual purpose. So we'll probably do just a straight 50 aircraft complement call that good. All right. That's looking good. Oh, wait, we're a hair overweight. There we go. I fixed it. And now all we got to do is design a superstructure for this thing. I'm not going to bore you guys with that. So just a second. And voila, we have our new carrier superstructure. All right. So uh, you'll notice I have the 4-inch guns on there right now, because that's ultimately what we're going to be designing around. So, also, I rolled back the machinery replacement, since that only bought us an extra 5 planes, and it cost an additional over 15, or cost me almost 15 million more for the rebuild there, so... Five planes for 15 million? Not really worth it. So we're not going to replace the machinery. And this is what our final version of this planet of this carrier is going to look like. Uh, but for right now, we need to appease the design board. So all of these fantastic four inch dual purpose guns have to go. So we'll clear those off. 
and we're going to put some eight inch guns in their place. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. We'll put them in casemates. Gonna have to drop down the plane count. And we do need some, actually, now, we're gonna keep those 42 planes. And we're just gonna have those eight inch guns and that's gonna be it. Oh, we also need some sort of light AA, so we'll put that on there. There we go. Got some light AA, got those insane heavy casemate guns. And I think this design looks good. A new generation aircraft carrier for a new generation Navy. Let's take a quick tour of the superstructure here so you can see plenty of platforms for uh, defensive guns and for observation stuff. We have a specific spot for our landing signals officer to help guide the uh, aircraft in as they land. And of course we have an extra wing over here which helps my carrier stay straight and fly very effectively. Uh, fun fact, we have our superstructure right here on the starboard side of the uh, ship. And that's actually, you'll notice that also holds true in uh, all modern aircraft carriers because of the uh, nature of the aircraft that they fly. So any sort of propeller driven aircraft and especially early propeller driven aircraft with rotary engines have a distinctive tendency to turn left when they are taking off or landing due to the torque effects of their propeller. And pilots don't want to have a big obstacle like the bridge observation deck right in the way where their plane might inadvertently turn if they don't control their plane properly. So almost every aircraft carrier ever built has their, uh, their bridge on the starboard side of the aircraft or of the starboard side of the carrier. And this particular carrier, since it's a fanta fancy experimental carrier, has a uh, lower flying off platform as well as the main uh, flight deck. So we've got all sorts of experimental capability right here. Very good for uh, our first aircraft carrier conversion. All right, our plane is our... Uh, Ship is set. We've got a good loadout. We'll check that. Yep, I know fire control is not the best type available. That costs tonnage, which I am not willing to spend. Okay, we'll save that. And we're gonna start rebuilding this thing. There we go, all right. Uh, I think that's going to call this episode to a close. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all next time. Until then, Katori87, signing out.